What is up, metalheads? <laughs> it's Thursday. I know. We don't normally stream on Thursdays, but we're only three weeks old, so fuck it. <laughs> Welcome to match six of Full Metal Trivia, where there can only be one player to rule them all. I'm going to be your host this evening, Alex the Omega Warden, taking place of Jeremy, who unfortunately can't make it due to personal commitments. With me tonight, co-hosting and helping with tour keeping and timekeeping, is the Red Ranger, RJ. What's going on? I'm not in any red today. Got to wash clothes. I only wear the red when I compete. Right now, <laughs> you can call me, let's see, I got a Dean Ambrose shirt and a Batman hat. You can call me the lunatic bat tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is, that is bat. All right. <laughs> and then I'm going to go from my screen from closest to furthest. Next on the docket, somebody who jumped into this match without hesitation when we needed a player tonight, TM Smith. How you doing, Tim? Uh, doing pretty good. Glad to be here. Let's let's hope it's I score some points this time. <laughs> Next on the docket, this man needs an introduction, but it's only good if he does it himself. So I'm gonna let Nico take this one. Representing New Kensington, Pennsylvania, ladies and gentlemen, the new Ken Martial Arts hardcore champion of the world, the Cosmic Night Fury, Nico Swabber Goalie. Always a pleasure to hear that. He is the Mr. Kennedy of our league, people. That goes without saying. Next on the docket, we got everyone's favorite porn lover, the Canadian nightmare, repping the Patriots, Mark Borich. How you doing? I'm just doing great. I'm ready to rack up some more points and probably win this one. We'll see. We'll see. Next, there was some question as to whether or not this competitor was going to make it tonight. Luckily, though, last minute, he was able to make the call. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mashed Potatoes, Caleb, what's going on tonight? What's up, guys? Mashed Potatoes here. Um, yeah, this was crazy. Um, I just got my phone back from the shop. Uh, there was a flood in our basement, and it ruined my phone and computer. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Yeah, oh. but uh, I'm here now. I'm excited. I'm ready to take down the Can't Fam Express. <laughs> soggy potatoes, soggy potatoes. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good. Next up on the docket, a player who made his second ever internet trivia match the first time he was here. Returning tonight, my fellow East Coast Canadian, the freak, Brooklyn Vale. What's going on, Brooklyn? We're, do we're doing good pretty Oh, we're happy. Second round, even that's that's a goal for me tonight. So we're hoping for the best. All right, all right. Your audio cut out there a bit, but we can hear you just good now. And lastly, the man who should know better than to pick Disney when Jeremy's in a match, the dude Andrew <laughs> Hayes. What's going on, Andrew? Uh nothing much. Just hoping I can do a lot better than last time. Hoping uh I can win. So let's see. All right. Well, I think everyone here hopes they can win, but it's going to come down to how well you do with the questions. Speaking of, let's get started. Round one goes like this. We will have eight questions from a variety of categories. Each competitor will be given 15 seconds to write their answers on the whiteboard, and then when called on, reveal their answer. If needed, you can ask for repeats of the questions, and after this round, the player with the highest, or players with the highest score, will get an advantage going into round two, and the player with the lowest, or players with the lowest scores, will be eliminated. Gentlemen, I know you're all ready. Get your whiteboards and markers up, and let's do this full metal style. Here we go. Your first question in round one. Category is drama. What actor starred in Half Nelson and Blue Valentine? Ain't Hot Nelson a skateboard move? Uh, I think maybe <laughs> surfing. It's a, it's a it? wrestling term. <laughs> oh, well, five, four, three, two, one. All right. I'm going to go first to ten. Never seen him. Yes, Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> okay. Next, Nico. Val Kilmer? No. Okay. On to Mark. Hey, at least they guessed. I didn't. Okay. Next up, Caleb. Yeah, I didn't have anything either. Okay. Brooklyn? Ryan Gosling? That is correct. And oh, Andrew. That would be my boy, oh, Ryan go. Gosling. Correct. All right. Back to my hometown. Moving on. Question two. In the category of taglines, what animated Disney film features the tagline, They're Taking Adventure, 
to new lengths. Personally, when I heard lengths, I thought this one is the story of a porn star, but eh, You know what? Not going to lie. It, it does sound like that would have been it. Five, the story of Ron Jeremy. Four. Can you repeat the question, please? Okay. What animated Disney film has the tagline, they're taking adventure to new lengths? Oh, Five, four, three, two, one. All Where's right. Tim? Once again, we're going to start off with Tim. Up? I have no idea. Up, sorry. Nico. I also wrote up. Okay. Mark. I wrote rescuers. No. Caleb. <laughs> I went with the rescuers down under. Oh, no, no. But, uh, <laughs> all right. Brooklyn. I, I blithe completely. And Andrew. I as well put up. Oh, no. Not even close. The we said lengths, guys, not heights. The answer was tangled. Oh. Oh. Because of the hair with the thing. and the yeah. They're punful. Okay. All right. All right. Question three. Category directors. Who directed... The Spy Kids f films. Thank God. <laughs> As a man from Texas, if I didn't know this, I would get shot. <laughs> yeah, I would probably have to shoot you if you didn't know this, actually. No, actually, he also went to the same high school as me. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, question. one. Repeat the question. Okay. Who directed the Spy Kids film franchise? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, once again, starting with him. Robert Rod Rodriguez? That is correct. Hey, right, I got a point. I'm happy. I'll see you all later. <laughs> Nico. <laughs> Robert Rodriguez. Correct. Mark. I spelled his last name wrong, but Robert Rodriguez. Spelling's okay. We're good. Caleb. Robert Rodriguez. Excellent. Brooklyn? Robert Rodriguez. Correct. And Andrew? Robert Rodriguez. Excellent. Everyone scores. Y'all know Hooray. Robert Rodriguez, but you don't know Disney. I feel proud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't question, know that, Disney. Question four. Category of comedy. What actress starred in The Ugly Truth, Killers, and one for the money. These all sound like very terrible movies. No, you know what? That's actually a lie. I like The Ugly Truth. Not going to lie. But it... Yeah, no, no, How no. no I, enjoy, I, I enjoy the main actor. That's why I enjoy it. Five, four, <laughs> three... Can you repeat the question? Okay. What actress starred in The Ugly Truth, Killers, and One for the Money? Man, I'll probably get this wrong because I can't think of her name right now. <laughs> Three, two, one. All right. Once again, going to Tim. RJ, at least you've seen these movies I haven't. Catherine Heigl? That is correct. A nice Makuga. <laughs> <laughs> On to Nico. I put Rachel McAdams. Oh, good guess. Mm. But no, she wouldn't stoop that low. On to Mark. <laughs> oh, it's going to be Catherine Heigl, but then I decided to go with Jennifer Aniston. Oh, second guess is gut and missed it. All right, Caleb. Catherine Heigl. I have seen correct. those movies. <laughs> I pity you. Unfortunately. <laughs> Brooklyn. One of the worst freaking characters in Grey's Anatomy, Catherine Heigl. Correct. And Andrew. I have no idea why this is the person I thought of. I put Jodie Foster. <laughs> oh, now that is a disservice to Jodie Foster. <laughs> I figured I'd put something, and she's the only name I could come up with. All right. Well, let's see if we guys can get some points back on this next one. Question five. The category is Marvel. Okay. What bald psychic mutant appears in both X-Men Apocalypse and Logan? We'd also like to refer to this as the gimme question. The gimme. 
If you ask for a repeat, shame on you. Five, Who's the point out of that? Four, three. Can I have a repeat two. just to piss off RJ? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What bald psychic mutant character appears in both X Men Apocalypse and Logan? Five, four, three, two, one. Nothing phases me. All right. <laughs> Tim, tell me you got it after that. Professor Xavier. That is correct. Nico. Professor X, Charles Xavier. That is correct. Mark. I just didn't put Charles, but Professor X. Correct. Caleb. Professor Charles Xavier, played by Patrick Stewart. Can't, well, you got the question right, but it was two different actors. Either way, still good. Not Brooklyn. Wait, what? Oh, Stewart. right, yeah. yeah. I got you. Yeah, anyway, yeah. On to Brooklyn. I didn't have enough time to write the other guy. Professor X. Correct. And Andrew. I, I overthought this question way too much. I put nothing. Okay. So on that note, there were actually two correct answers for this question. We would have accepted Professor X or Taliban. Yep. That's that's who I was thinking of. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. that's, I, Strangely enough, I thought about Caliban, but not <laughs> Professor X. So. Okay. Let's go with the safe answer, guys. Okay. Question six. I remember him in Apocalypse. Question six. Moving on to the category of Disney. What Disney yeah. animated feature film features the voice talent of Vincent Price? Ooh. Oh. Now, on a scale of deep cuts, this one would be, oh, my God, where did my arm go? Right? Like, I can't even remember his voice right now. When I tested this question, I legitimately was like, wait, what? Okay. Five, Alex, repeat. Four. Oh, we got to repeat. repeat that question. Okay. What Disney animated feature film features the voice talent of Vincent Price? Five, four, three. Repeat it again. Two. Okay, final repeat of the question. What Disney animated feature film features the voice talent of Vincent Price? The price is wrong, Bob. Five, four, three, two, and... Those weren't a long time ago if you didn't get okay. it. Okay. Starting off with Tim again. And to RJ's real quick, the correct is the price is wrong, bitch. I'm guessing the Black Cauldron. Incorrect. Okay. Uh, on to Nico. The answer is wrong, bitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Nico. Pinocchio. Incorrect. Mark. I went with Nightmare Before Christmas. No. Would have been a good pick, but no. Yeah, I was just thinking of the beginning of the movie. All right. Yeah. Caleb. Yeah, I didn't have it. Brooklyn. A uh, complete guess. Fox and the Hound? No. Good guess, though. And Andrew. I also took a complete guess. 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> no, that would have been interesting, yeah. but no, sadly. The answer is yeah. The Great Mouse Detective. Oh, of course. Yes. Oh. The Radigan. Radigan, yeah. I can't uh, yeah. pretty good in that All right. I could hear his right. voice, but I couldn't think of it. I know, same here. Mm. Okay. Moving on to question number seven of the first round, the category of 80s films. What actor co-starred in both Howard the Duck and Bull Durham. Ooh. I'll tell you I've what. I've seen Bull Durham. Heard it's good though. Of these two movies, one of them is an all time favorite of mine. The other is Howard the Duck. Howard the oh. Duck is a classic. You shut your mouth. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I, I have to. I have to. The Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Howard the Duck is a guilty pleasure. All right. Tim. I have no idea. I just guessed Dustin Hoffman again. Okay. <laughs> now, that would have been interesting. Nico. I don't think I'm making it to round two. Michael Keaton? No, <laughs> that's actually not a bad guess, but no. All right, Mark. As much as I love How the Duck, I couldn't pull it. Oh, on to Caleb. Tim Robbins. That is correct. Oh, Susan Sarandon's ooh. son. I mean, a husband. <laughs> and Brooklyn. Uh... Probably she, but yeah. Oh, uh, no, no. And Andrew. I got nothing. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Last chance for some points in this round, gents. The final question of round one comes in the category of quotes. In what film does Mel Gibson say, not many people know what their life is worth? I do. 70 grand. I am so glad Jeremy wrote this question because this is one of my favorite Mel Gibson movies. I'm embarrassed to say which one is mine. <laughs> <laughs> if you say what women want, actually, I wouldn't be surprised. That's a good movie. It actually is. I there enjoy that go. movie quite a lot. Hey, it's a good movie. Five, four. The question? Sure. In what film does Mel Gibson say, not many people know what their life is worth? I do. 70 grand. Five, four, three, two, one. I give you a little extra time because that's a that's a hard one. <laughs> All right, yep. we're gonna start with Tim again. Ransom? No, close guess, but no. Nico? I don't watch enough Mel Gibson. Lethal Weapon? No. no. <laughs> On to Mark. Complete Makuga, if this is right, payback. That is correct with the Makuga. I love it. I, remember, I just remember that trailer. That name sticks out to me. Uh -huh. All right, Caleb, were you able to pull payback? I didn't have it. I wrote paycheck. I know that's the Oh! oh. Close on the title, but no. All right, Brooklyn. You don't want to hear my guess. You don't want to hear my guess. I kind of okay. do. I kind of do. <laughs> uh, lethal Weapon 2. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so you're about on par with Nico there. All right. And finally, Andrew. I put Lethal Weapon as well. <laughs> I love where your minds are headed, but no, no. All right. So that is the end of round one. RJ, can we get the scores, please? All right. So tied for first place, the two competitors who will be getting the advantage in round two is Brooklyn and Caleb, both with four. Let's go. Okay. Nicely done, right. Brooklyn. Nice done. And then next, for sure, still moving on, another tie. We have Tim and Mark with three. And on Express. What? So I guess that means, unfortunately, the two players that will be eliminated with only two points will be Andrew and Nico. Oh, okay. So, both put up a good fight. I will say these questions were not easy tonight. No. For redemption, Jeremy brought his A game in writing these. Nico, Andrew, you guys are more than welcome to stick around with your mics muted and hang out and watch live, but unfortunately, your night for scoring points is done. All right, so with that said, we are going to move on to round two. If this is your first time watching, round two works like this. We will have our competitors pick numbers from a set field. The two players in first place will each get to pick an additional number. Then we will run a random number generator. If a player's number is pulled, they get to pick the category. But if a number not pulled by someone comes up, we get the secret category. <laughs> so with that said, we have two players who need two, two who need one. RJ, we'll need a random number between one and seven. Do you have that covered? I've got the app on my phone that Chance uses. All right, actually, RJ, do you have it? Yeah, I got one that can do one through seven. Okay, perfect. So we're going to start off, and I am going to first ask Caleb to pick two numbers between one and seven. Let's go uh, three and seven. Okay. Next, Brooklyn, pick two numbers between one and seven. Three and seven are off the table. I will pick number one and number two. Okay. Next, we'll go to Tim. Uh, four. And Mark, you have a choice between five and six. Five and six. I'll go with six. Okay. And if five is pulled, we get the secret category, and you all suffer. <laughs> well, to, uh, he's, hey. he's anxious worth two points, though, so. Well, no, no, no. Well, we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> all right. RJ, when you're ready. Sorry, I'm just changing the, the maximum number on this thing. <laughs> all right. And the number is four. Ooh. And that means that Tim gets to pick the category. So here's how this works. I'm going to give you a list of categories. You can pick mm -hmm. the choice you want, but there is the option, if you don't like any of them and you think you have a chance at the secret category, you can take that and everyone will get double points for their correct answers in this round. 
So keep that in mind. Tim, your options in this round are biopics, comedy, Lord of the Rings, based on TV, Spielberg, DC movies, and of course, the secret category. Two based on TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. With these low scores, I think secret category might be a good pick, but there is the air of mystery of what could it be. He wants you to do a TV uh, trivia, so he might do that. <laughs> that is true. Pick Lord of the Rings for Caleb. He's begging for it. Let's go uh, secret I'm category. not begging. What was your answer, Tim? Secret category. Oh, okay. I'm feeling lucky. Oh. I don't know if you guys will like this or not. You can thank me if you do. You can yell at Jeremy if you don't. The secret category is M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's not awful. I'm excited. All right. I mean, all of these flicks. <laughs> Here we go. Category is M. Night Shyamalan. Four questions. Each correct answer worth two points. Here we go. First up, M. Night Shyamalan had a writing credit on what 1999 family feature? Ooh, that's cut. And I feel like I know it. Not going to lie. But I'd probably get it wrong anyways. <laughs> well, we'll find out once we see everyone else go. Right the year again? I'll repeat the question. Or, yeah, please. Okay. Thank you. Shyamalan had a writing credit on what 1999 family film? And in five, four, three, two, one, time. All right, Tim, start us off. No idea, no luck on this one. Okay, on to Mark. I, I think I remember reading this up. See all that? No, incorrect. That is not a family film. No, at all. all. <laughs> I've never even heard the movie before. Right. Moving on to Caleb. Uh, I guessed Homeward Bound, but I, it's not. No, oh, that was 93. And Brooklyn. Yeah, I know. Complete airball guess. How did we shrunk ourselves? No, that was actually 97. Oh, if I'm not mistaken. That was 97? Oh, no, I have actually no idea what it is. Well, the answer was Stuart Little. Oh, oh. Really? Ha. That explains what? the twist. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Okay. All right, on to the next question. Name one of the two actors who appear in both the 2010 Shyamalan-produced Devil and Spider-Man Homecoming. Kind of odd that these two films have actors in common when you think about it, but oh, I suppose they're, um, I suppose I Shyamalan, Marvel, they're both the spawn of Satan. Dang it, and I don't know that dude's name, and I know he's in both. Five, four. All right, can you repeat it? All right. Name one of the two oh, actors okay. who appear in both 2010's Shyamalan-produced Devil and Spider-Man Homecoming. It's the guy with the thing in the face. I know it, like, and I just can't think of his name. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Tim? Michael Keaton? No. Mm. No. And Mark? Just because this actor's come up in a lot of the Spider-Man Homecoming questions that have been asked, Logan Marshall Green? Correct. On to Caleb. <laughs> I just guessed Michael Pena because he was in Devil. Okay. And Brooklyn. Uh, Marissa Tomei, complete guess? No, nope, unfortunately, no. The answer was Logan Marshall Green and Bo Keem Woodvine. Who? Woodvine was the one I couldn't remember. That's the guy I was thinking of. All right. Your next question in the category of Shyamalan. Name the film directed to, by Shyamalan prior to The Sixth Sense. Ooh, nice. Wait, well, earlier that again, you kind of right. broke out. Okay. Name the film directed by Shyamalan prior to The Sixth Sense. I definitely wouldn't know this. <laughs> now, if you want deep cuts, this is cut off both your arms and legs and leave you just a stump. 
can can we do that to Shyamalan for ruining the Last Airbender, which should have been a great movie franchise, and he just uh, buried it? <laughs> I kind of wanted to for a while. Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I went to the midnight showing of it. I was so sad, so so sad. Five, four, three, two, one. So sad. All right. Tim, any guess? Uh, I know it's probably wrong because I think it came out after I just put signs. Oh, that did come out after. Yeah. On to Mark. I don't know. Okay. Caleb? I guess some 8 millimeter bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was. And finally, Brooklyn. Uh, I guess Unbreakable. Oh, no, that was just nope, after. Was after. Yep. The name of the film was Wide Awake. What? I don't know. Oh, I never saw that. Okay. They talked about it on Collider. Yeah. All right. And your final question. In which Jesus. film does Shyamalan have a cameo as a man who loves the restaurant Hooters? I'm sorry. Did you say Hooters? Yes. You like going there for wings? <laughs> no. Their food is actually terrible. Like, I just... I mean, I know why people go there, but I don't know why people go there. <laughs> Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Go to Wingstop. As Chris Rock said, no one goes to Hooters for wings. Let's start with <laughs> Tim. Unless it's a cup night, then you really struck out. Uh, see you guys later. Uh, all right. <laughs> Mark. I, just, I finally just watched this split. Yes, that is correct. And Caleb. I didn't get it. It's a lady in the water. Oh, uh, close. And Brooklyn. The only one I know where he has a cameo of signs, but I knew it's wrong. No, that is incorrect. Actually, he has a cameo in all of his movies, to be honest. Oh, shit. Yep. <laughs> all right. So that is the end of round two. Once again, Jeez. the secret category. Jeremy does not fuck around. No. He doesn't. Why couldn't I get any silent movies? I got three of those. I got four points that round, so I'm happy. All right, so with that said, RJ, what are the scores looking like after round two? Um, so as Mark said, he was the only one who earned any points in round two, so he is at seven. And Caleb and Brooklyn didn't earn any points, so they're stuck at four. And unfortunately, the gentleman who chose the category has been eliminated for not scoring. He only has three points. Oh, Sorry, okay. Tim. Sorry, Tim. Once again, good showing. The secret category just completely threw you by surprise. Hey, I was happy it's three points better than the last. All right. So. <laughs> That's three more points to your standings. So that said, like Andrew and Nico before you, you're free to stick around with your mic muted and watch the rest of the match live here with us, but you are out of the competition. With that being the case, we have our final three contestants. So let's move on to round three. Alex, can, I try a, can I try a quick introduction for this round? Go for it. Mm. Welcome to round three, where the questions are made up and the points don't matter, right? The points are like Mark's <laughs> winning streak. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't even exist. Ah, well, <laughs> the points do count for your overall standings, but your points going into this round don't mean anything. You just have to get here. The point of the round is now we will play, just like round one, whiteboard answers, 15 seconds to answer. But if a player misses, they are eliminated from the remaining competition, and it is shoot till you miss until we have a winner. So, to our final three, Mark, Caleb, Brooklyn, are you ready? Yes, as ready as I'll ever be. Now. Yeah, what Mark said. All right, Brooklyn, are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Let's find the one player to rule them all tonight. Your first question in the final round. In coming-of-age films, in The Edge of Seventeen, why does Haley Steinfeld's character stop talking to her best friend? I haven't even seen this movie, and I don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, much prefer the Stevie, I much prefer the Stevie Nicks song. Hmm. I really do want to see that movie, though. I heard it was really good. Five, Just four, before. three, two, one. All right. I'm going to start off with Mark. Uh, she dated, went out with her brother? That is correct. On to Caleb. Is it she had sex with her boyfriend? No. Ooh. And Brooklyn, were you able to pull it? I was thinking of the wrong one when he tried to sexually assault her. Oh! oh. <laughs> and it only took one question, but ladies and gentlemen, your winner tonight, 
putting a win on the books. The Canadian Nightmare. Yes. Lost for it. Yeah, thank you, partner. All right. Wow. Mark, since you got the victory, do you have any words? Oh, my God. I'm just, wow, I'm just happy. I, I, came, in, I came in the finals last, my last match, and I won this one. Oh, my God, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> All right. Did you honestly think you would win with the Edge of Seventeen? No. <laughs> I saw that movie once a while ago. <laughs> all right. All right. On that note, that's all we have for you tonight, folks. RJ, do you have any closing words as my co-host before we wrap this up? I, I am not kidding. I had like 90% in my mind that this round was going to be over on this question. I was like, somebody is going to get this wrong. Holy crap. <laughs> that was a good match. Uh, hats off to all the players. Um, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a great match to watch. I'm glad I could be here. And, yeah. you know, looking and forward to next time. And don't let the scores fool you, folks. Honestly, this is redemption for these players. They've all been here before. I'm sure they'll all be here again. But oh. Jeremy purposely made these questions a little bit tougher for returning players. A little bit. These were no cakewalks. Don't let the scores fool you. But on that note, if you think you could have done better in this <clears throat> format, I got four words for you. Get in the ring. And in the list of basic training. Ah, but on that note, for our panel tonight, Andrew Hayes, Brooklyn Vale, Caleb H., RJ, my co-host, Mark, Nico, Tim, I've been your host, Alex Omega Warden. We will see you next time on Full Metal Trivia. Goodbye. Jeremy, this question.